Inside for Callum Wilson, a bit of space here for Longstaff. Big moment from Let's Go, Sean Longstaff. I'm pretty sure that's his first goal. Ball played out wide for Callum Wilson. Could get a hat trick. It's a hat trick for Callum Wilson. His first hat trick this season. The transfer window hype gets real in today's episode as it's time to start making some signings in January. Remember, the rule is that we can make only one signing in January and we've got to make it count. We've got about 16 million or so in the bank, potentially a bit more with player sales, but we got to try and make a signing that's going to improve this team that we've built. Finally, in this episode, we might have a chance to go further up the table. It feels like we've been stuck at ninth spot forever and I'd love to move up the table. And against Everton, we've got that opportunity. So it's a big episode gameplay wise as well. Well, there's definitely a lot to look forward to in this one. If you're enjoying this Newcastle career mode, spare a second and drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here and let's kick things off. Press conference to kick off the episode. First one signed for Fana from Leicester. The city he's young and has also got good potential so as we spoke in the last episode improving that defense is going to be a key criteria getting a better defender for the future and i feel like wesley fafana might just be the man he's having a good season with leicester a solid solid center back and honestly could be one of the players we use for a long long time he'll bring much needed pace to our back line the only question is do we have enough cash to afford a transfer like this, we're gonna have to wait to find out first, we'll be scouting him. Next up, are you planning on bringing in a new striker in December? As we mentioned in the previous episode, nope, that is not a part of the plan. Reason being, St. Maximin can play in that position, Almiron if needed, Ryan Fraser as well. And since we're not taking part in any European competition, it's, it's fine having just one striker, you know, one out and out striker in Wilson. Other players can accommodate if needs be so. A bit of a risk I'm taking and that's why we're not signing a striker in the January transfer window. Next up, who do you believe has been the most influential player of the series so far? That's actually super easy. 100% Callum Wilson. He's only just coming off a hat-trick against Arsenal. 13 goals so far this season and 7 assists. Superb up top. He scored against a lot of the big teams we've played. It's got to be Callum Wilson. 100% our most influential player and I absolutely love using him on this game. With that, press conference done. Talking about Callum Wilson, well, he picks up a player of the episode award. Only in the last episode, he just smashed a hat-trick past Arsenal. It was unbelievable and deservedly so, he picks up a player of the episode award. Now, as I said before, we're going to have to wait a bit until we get to know more about Wesley Fofana before we can actually go in for an offer. So, you guys need to be a bit patient on this. Until then, though, We've got some big Premier League action coming up. Up next, it's Everton away. They're 8th in the Premier League, but if we can get a result against them here, we go above them in the league and that'll be huge for us. So, let's aim for this. I'm not really experimenting with my team for this one. We're going with the strongest possible 11. Buendia, Cam, Callum Wilson, Almiron, all of them starting. But you know what? I kind of feel Sean Longstaff has earned his keep in that midfield over even John Joe Shelby. So, we're going to play him. The more we play Sean Longstaff, the higher he's going to get in his overall. So it just makes sense to start him more often. And there you go. That's the Newcastle team I'm sticking with for this one at Goodison Park. They've got James, Richarlison. I'm pretty sure Everton beat us the last time we played the match in James's Park. So it'll be nice to get some revenge and go above them in the Prem. Oh, that's a good ball for Buendia if he can keep it in. Oh, that's decent from Buendia. Goes for goal. The flick was a bit too much because he couldn't turn as quickly into the side of the ball and well the shot was pretty much a pass but good intent from us Buendia trying something unique the pressure is definitely on Buendia Joe Willock has been so good for us lately that Buendia better step up otherwise he could actually end up getting benched and he's once more breaking through similar attack Buendia on his weaker left foot shot gets blocked Everton are backing off as Miguel Almiron tries to bring the ball inwards still Miguel Almiron space to maybe go for the finesse shot I'm going for it but not on target so far, we've pinned Everton back. They aren't really doing much, but we got to make it count. Richarlison now looks for Andre Gomez. Now James. That's a good pass. Sigurdsson going for it. Oh, that's brilliantly. Wait, what? I got the ball with Jamal Lewis. Ref, I legit got the ball. I'm not even kidding. We need to have a look at the replay here because this, this, this is not right. I'm 100% I'm sure I got the ball. I, I can't see clearly from that replay. We need we need another good look at the replay, man. That's that's not good enough. We'll take a look after this penalty. James to take it. A big moment for Dubravka. Can he stop James from scoring? Yes, he can. Let's go, boys. Dubravka saves a penalty. 
Oh my god, that was insane. Hamez actually put that one bottom left corner. Dubravka just guessed right. And we got it done. So Gertz in now. Andre Gomez. Richarlison has broken through. And well, well, well. Everton finally get their goal. They missed the penalty, but Richarlison wasn't missing that. He's running straight down to the camera, celebrating as well. This is frustrating. Everton make it one. And I don't want to have Everton do a league double over us, because that'll be a bit painful. Plus, if we lose this, I think we're going to not end up finishing above ninth spot in the Prem. The gap will just be too much. Miguel Almiron breaking through. That pass for Callum Wilson is nice. Here goes Callum Wilson. Should score. Oh, Callum Wilson. A lovely finish from him. He scores yet another goal in the Prem. That's what, 14 for the season? Yo, he's coming for that golden boot. I'd love to take a look and see how many is he on. I'm pretty sure he's on 14, but I think there are a few players above that. Like, yeah, so I'm not sure if he can win the golden boot or not. But what I am sure of is this man is firing goals left, right and center for us. He's leading the attack. Put us one all now against Everton and let's keep pushing. Wilson. Oh, Longstaff has made a good run. I'm just going for it from distance, but I maybe had time to take the ball forward with Longstaff. Anyways, Pickford with a good save. Half time against Everton. It's been a very exciting game of football. A lot of drama with that early penalty. The save from Dubravka. Then they scored. We got the equalizer. I think we're competing with them very well. Let's put in a good second half as well. Everton breaking through here. Richarlison finds Sigurdsson. I don't want that pass to go for Richarlison. It's gone through. Dubravka needs another special moment. He, I don't know how he managed to save that. I'm pretty sure that's more for Richarlison, Richarlison miss than you'd call a Dubravka save. We got super lucky with that. And on the break, we could do damage. St. Maximin is breaking through here. He's got all the pace in the world. Brings it inside. Maybe a finesse shot from distance. St. Maximin hits the bar. Almiron on the rebound and Pickford still saves it. How unlucky can we get? Two chances there back to back for us. St. Maximin would have scored one of our best goals of the season, but the luck just wasn't there with him. Couldn't think of a better time to bring on Joe Willock in that cam spot, so let's do it. He's been influential for us this season. Coming off the bench, or we're never given the opportunities, managed to find the back of the net. Let's hope he can do it again. Andre Gomez attacking our defense. I've got to hold him off. That's a good drag back. Now, Alan. Looks for Decore. That's good defending from Jamal Lewis right there. He's definitely had a tough game with that penalty call. But he's definitely recovered well. And now, on the break, Jamal Lewis bringing the ball forward. Releasing this one for St. Maximin. And here he goes on the attack. Still St. Maximin. Cutting inside. Looking for passing options. Sees Wilson. Wilson out wide for long stuff. I was trying to find Almiron. And that attack has been ruined. Miguel Almiron. Let's see what he can do. Opening up a bit of space. In fact, shooting position for Almiron forces a big save out of Pickford. That could have gone anywhere. Oh, they're breaking through now. Calvert-Lewin has broken through. Dubravka, come on. 89th minute, man. This is brutal. Everton are going to get the league double against us. It's a big defeat. Still shows, man. We've got ways to go. Everton, I think, have been the better team overall. Especially in that first half, but uh, we had the chances in the second half as well. Uh, probably you could say it's an even game where just one team edged out just about. That's probably what's happened here. Dominic Calvert-Lewin with the goal. Not gonna lie, at some point we were gonna end up losing. Like, we were on a great run of form, winning a ton of games. So this was bound to happen. Frustrating that in, in the manner of which it happened. And also, this game kind of makes me realize that having a quick centre-back would really help us in all these situations. We just couldn't keep up on that last attack with the pace that Everton were playing with. So, getting a quick centre-back, maybe for Fana, is the key. Next up in the Premier League for us, home game against Brighton, which we're going to take a chance and sim and see what can happen. Please give me a win here. Please give me a win. Oh, come on. The games that we sim, why can't we get wins? It's a two-all draw. Frustrating. That's now what? One point out of our last two Premier League games are incredibly frustrating. Okay, so we've just received a few transfer offers for our existing centre-backs, which could make things incredibly interesting. An offer for Jamal Lachelles, 15 million I think it is, 14.8 million from Wolfsburg. Wow, that is good money for him. Yo, if we sell Lachelles... I think we've got about 30 million to invest in a centre-back and we could invest in a really, really good centre-back then. I'm tempted, guys, but he's our captain as well. It's it's a really difficult one. An offer for Fabian Shaw. I don't want to sell him. I really enjoy using him. The shells, though, I feel like his pace doesn't help him at all. 
you know what, let's negotiate with Wolfsburg. If they're willing to give us maybe 17, 18 million, then it's just the smart thing to do, guys. Let's be real. Okay, so let's counter with 17 million just to see what they're willing to say. If they're willing to pay me 17 million for the shells, I think we can do a deal. Let's figure it out. 15.8. And look at that on your top left. 31 million is what we'll have to sign as center back. And that's massive, guys. That's absolutely massive. Let's counter with 16 and a half. If they don't accept this, I don't think I'm going to do a deal. 16 and a half. Huh, let's, let's make it 16. I'm willing to do it. 16 million for the shells. Come on, pull it off. 16 million. And it's done. I, th I think I'm making a mistake. At the same time, if we can invest that money that we get elsewhere to bring in a top class centre back with a lot of pace, I think it's money well spent. We'll have to figure things out soon. Maybe Fofana isn't the player to bring in because I just checked his overall. Oh, besides that, we can't even sign him. The player has recently just joined this club and won't move again. Anyways, we'll need to look elsewhere, but Lachelle's could be on his way out and we can have a lot of drama in this episode now. In the midst of all this transfer chaos, it's time for some FA Cup action. We take on Chelsea at St. James's Park. I think we've won six games so far at home, so... Let's make it seven if we can somehow knock out Chelsea and continue our dream cup run. That'll be nuts. Would you believe it? Calvin Phillips is actually suspended for this FA Cup game. That's a tough blow. I guess Hayden will finally get his opportunity. We've barely used him at all this season. So big game for him as well. Apart from that, we've got, you know, the rest of the ballers starting. I am playing Willock and Fraser. They've been good in cup competitions. Let's reward them with the game here. Newcastle versus Chelsea. I'm also, I think, you know, gonna... Ah, uh, do I play the shells or not? Because he's going to be moving to Wolfsburg. You know what? Let's give him his final game as captain. Hopefully, he can lead us to the next round of the FA Cup against Chelsea. The stipulation to unlock the Heineken deal for the shirt sponsor for next season is that we've got to reach the semi-finals now of the FA Cup. If we pull it off, man, it'll be insane. Of course, we also need to finish 8th in the Premier League, which looks like is going to be a difficult task. But still, if we can do both of them... We'll get a lot of bonus money for next season. So it starts with, you know, beating Chelsea here. Good play from him. Looks inside for Havertz. Way too much space for them to work with. Joe Willock tracking back and defending, but he eventually gives it away. Victor Moses playing for Chelsea. Billy Gilmore as well. They're not taking this game seriously, are they? Well, they are. Timo Werner scores. I'm pretty sure he's the top scorer in the Premier League as well. Chelsea strike first in the FA Cup. Timo Werner with the goal. This could be the end of our FA Cup journey right here, right now. We'll see how the remaining 80 minutes go. This is our first game, I think, that we've played since signing Calvin Phillips without him. And it shows. I'm feeling so empty in midfield. Musonda Jr. looks for Havertz. Pass inside for Billy Gilmore. And now it's Sky Havertz with a chance and 2-0 down within 20 minutes. Yikes. I expected a bit more from us in this FA Cup game, but well... Chelsea dominating here. My god, this this could get ugly by the way things are going because I don't see myself making a comeback here. Chelsea look ruthless. Fraser, Wilson, back for Ryan Fraser. This is certainly nice. Wilson again. Space to maybe get a shot off. Does so, but blocked by Chelsea. That's literally the first time we've even entered the Chelsea box. That's how difficult this game's been. Oh, Max Adams wins that and now we've got space to do damage. Good pass for Callum Wilson. Can he get a 1v1 opportunity? He just about can. Goes for goal, Callum Wilson. With the way he's playing currently, nothing can stop him from scoring. Max Adams with the through ball. And it's Callum Wilson with yet another goal. This time, though, in the FA Cup. We've got one goal back. And there's a bit of hope. Is that Willy Caballero in goal for, uh, for Chelsea? Yeah, it is. It is Willy Caballero in goal. You know what? I might need to start taking some long shots and hope for the best because that could work. We're back in it, boys. It's 2-1. Uh, Timo Werner is just so scary when he's running in behind and he's run through. And I completely messed up Dubravka, though. Get the ball away. Oh, Jamal Lewis with a cheeky clearance. We really should be 3-1 down there. I don't know how we survived that. Dubravka with a big save. And then, of course, um, Jamal Lewis with the clearance. Brilliant to see. Into the second half we go. The first half, Chelsea shocked us with two early goals and we were stunned. But we responded well. We got a goal back. Let's see what we can do in the remaining 45 minutes. If we can somehow start a comeback against Chelsea, that'll be huge. Havertz now looking to get past. Again, finding Werner easily, but Werner's forced out wide. Ha, Werner with the dribbling there, but that's good from Fabian Shaw. As we could maybe hit them on the break. Are there options? Callum Wilson is there. 
But no, oh, it's so difficult even breaking away from this Chelsea team. They're so well organized. Fair enough, Thomas Tuchel. Looks for Wilson. Back for John Joe Shelby. This is looking nice. Now Callum Wilson has broken through. Could he get the equalizer? Driven shot. Callum Wilson is so good on this game, honestly. He is carrying our attack in this series. That's yet another brace for Callum Wilson. This is the kind of form he had back in Bournemouth. And he's just completely destroying teams. And this is Chelsea, by the way. Really can't be at all stunned. Callum Wilson brings the equaliser. John Joe Shelby picking up the assist. A huge goal. It's 2 all, And there's actually a chance of us doing the impossible. A comeback after being 2-0 down against Chelsea in the FA Cup. Let's push for it. Here we go again. John Joe Shelby in a bit of space. Back for Callum Wilson. Goes for goal. And that's in. Callum Wilson is broken. Nah, nah, nah. Callum Wilson is broken. I literally just took a snapshot there. Hoping, you know, we maybe get a corner. That's actually gone in. Unreal scenes. John Joe Shelby finding Callum Wilson. Bang. Willy Caballero didn't even move. Well, that's probably Chelsea's fault playing him because he's pretty terrible as a keeper in this game. But my God, Callum Wilson has just turned this game completely on his own, guys. On his own. 3-2 against Chelsea. Let's now defend for the remaining whatever minutes because we've got a real chance of doing a shock here and knocking Chelsea out. Let's complete this, guys. Let's get it done. In fact, I'm going to make somewhat of a defensive change. Longstaff is going to be playing at Cam to, you know, try and win a lot of balls and holding the ball in midfield. We'll also bring on Almiron on that right side and see how this works. Chelsea on the ball. Victor Moses looks for Billy Gilmore. It's been a long spell of possession for Chelsea. Werner again. We cannot let him shoot. Havertz. Back to Timo Werner. This is scary. This is honestly scary. And Timo Werner is just nuts. Fair play, Timo. What can I even say? You really can't do anything about that. Fantastic from Timo Werner. It's 3-3. This has been a classic in the FA Cup. A ridiculous game. We might be having a replay here. Looks for John Joe Shelby. One last chance. St. Maximin. Looks for Callum. Back for St. Maximin here. Good pass. Can he find his way to long stuff? Oh, St. Maximin gets that somehow. We've actually scored in the 98th minute. What happened there? How did we even get the ball? St. Maximin in the 90th minute wins us the game and Chelsea are getting knocked out of the FA Cup. Look at that. It was so scrappy, but somehow they Aspilicueta just gave St. Maximin the ball. Is he playing for us? I don't know, but St. Maximin took complete advantage of that. Willy Caballero has just been a passenger in this game. Nothing from him. We take advantage of that. St. Maximin sips the D on Chelsea and we send them packing. There's no way Chelsea are mounting any sort of a comeback now. It's done. Referee, blow the whistle, end the game. We've knocked out Chelsea from the FA Cup in the most dramatic way possible. What a night. Probably my favorite game of FIFA I've played this year. Insane. And Callum Wilson bags a hat-trick and I didn't even realize. Yep, that's how good this man is. Callum Wilson with a hat-trick. And I didn't even notice that. Unreal scenes. What a performance in the FA Cup. We've knocked out Chelsea. Now time to get back to some transfer business. We're still on the hunt for a centre-back. And of course, Jamal Lachelle's now being sold means that we got to up the tempo, up the speed and bring in a quality centre-back. It's a bummer we've decided to sell him. But at some point, this was bound to happen. We need a quicker centre-back. One for the future to pair up with Shah for now. And that's why the move has been made. 16 million is what we sold him for. We'll get a good amount of money added on to our transfer budget. And we're looking at about 29 point nine eight mil that's decent that is very very decent and i think we can sign a really good center back with that kind of money let's make it happen time is running out we've got four days to go before we hit uh, the deadline day and i want to try and wrap it up before that now i have a certain center back in mind to bring to of course elevate this team to the next level and that's jules conde i've been watching la liga a lot lately and this this guy is just unbelievable. He scored a fantastic goal against Barcelona lately in the Copa del Rey and overall his play is just unbelievable and I think with the pace he brings he'll partner Shah really well and will offer a lot to the team. I want to make this happen. Do we have enough money? That is the real question. We've done a bit of scouting and we may have just about enough money to make this deal go through. He's worth about 31 million. We've got 29, but by adjusting wages and all, it may be a possibility. Let's figure this out. Let's freaking figure this out. Approach to buy Jules Conde to Newcastle would be huge for our defense. We're negotiating with Lopetegui for this one. Let's start off with a 30 million offer. 
all our transfer money, pretty much. Let's offer this and see what Sevilla come back and say. What? They're willing to accept that? Just 30 million for Jules Conde? That's a bargain? Yo, that is absolutely brilliant. All we gotta do is convince him to join Newcastle United, which is a massive downgrade in my opinion. But still, I think we can pull it off. Come on, let's sign Conde. Instantly our defence will be 10 times better if we can bring in a talent like this. Come on, let's negotiate with Conde. Um, crucial squad role, I'm sure he's gonna accept nothing less. By the way, with the realism mod, he's got a realistic player face as well. He accepts the crucial squad role, which is awesome. Five year deal. Works for me 100%. Moving on, we're not gonna give him a release clause. He's willing to take a wage cut. This makes no sense. We'll just remove the appearance bonus, submit offer. Are we actually going to end up signing a talented centre-back like Jules Conde in our first season itself? Nah man, it's it's actually going to happen here. Accept offer, it's done. Jules Conde to Newcastle United is a done deal. What an insane transfer this is, honestly. We're building for the future, but he can be our present as well because this kid is that good. Even the Newcastle board are surprised by this because look at this, we've completed the sign one crucial first team player assigned to a defender position objective. So that's pretty cool. Not gonna lie, this transfer is absolutely massive. He's worthy of wearing a number like the number six. Look at some of his best stats. The sprint speed is there, the jumping. He's only 79 rated, I know, but he's gonna go up in his overall massively throughout the course of this series but what a signing we've pulled off jules kunde looks bloody brilliant in that defense guys honestly the 79 pace added on to our backline he's pretty much quicker than well two of our four defenders i think max adams is a bit faster but that's huge man yo i'm so gassed about this signing like this is massive we now find ourselves with a home game against west brom who are bottom of the premier league Conde's debut as well. We're gonna sim this, get through this, and I'm expecting a win. Finally, we sim a game and get a win, so that's awesome. 3-1 against West Brom. Wilson scoring yet another brace. The kind of form he's in right now, it's nuts. We're on transfer deadline day, but as you know, we just signed Jules Conde. I don't think we're doing any more business. I don't think I'm gonna be selling any more players. We get like an offer for Kieran Clark, but that's a pre-contract deal, which I'm fine, it can happen. I'm not too keen on that, but I think I'm done with my transfer window. We're going to settle for this team until the end of the season. And I'm I'm really keen to see how things go. We've improved our defense massively with the signing of Jules Conde. So we end off today's episode, well, being ninth in the Premier League, as you'd guess. This is where we've been all season long. And of course, in the FA Cup, who have we drawn? Preston. Oh, I'm liking that. At home as well. That is awesome. Not gonna lie, we're actually doing really well with our sponsor's objective. Just one more home win and we complete the Burger King one. So that is superb. Three more and of course the Jeep one is done. In fact, no, four more. So things are going well with our sponsor's tab. Next season, we're gonna have a new sponsor. Late of the episode for me, I just cannot look past Callum Wilson. Yet again, the goals, another hat-trick. Just crazy. I mean, his stats, you know what? Let's take a look at his stats because they're just absurd. Like, honestly, look at this. 19 goals in 26 games like this is nuts callum wilson has just been unreal played of the episode 100 he's winning it next episode's definitely going to be a ton of fun because look at this we play both city and united in the same episode i don't know how that's going to turn out we'll see though but conde will get his first appearance we're done with the transfer window it's now going to be a push until the end of the season should be a ton of fun but if you're enjoying this newcastle career mode keep the support coming in by dropping a like on the video subscribe if you're new around here and I'll catch you guys next time.